Hello, everyone. Welcome to Simply Explained English, the podcast where we make English easy and fun. I am Eric, and I am Lisa. We're here to help you understand English words and phrases in a simple way. We will help you, whether you want to learn English or just brush up on your skills. Then get ready to boost your English with us. Let's dive into today's topic. What is the topic of today's words, Eric? Today's words are about holiday. And our first word is coming. It is abroad. Then we will continue with day trip, to sunbathe, and bed and breakfast. The final one is foreign. Okay, let's start with abroad. What does it mean, Lisa? Okay, Eric. Abroad means to go to another country, usually for a holiday or to work. That's right, Lisa. For example, Sarah is studying abroad in Spain, or. We will go abroad next summer for a holiday. Good examples. Okay, let's look at our example dialogue on abroad. Hey, Alex, what are you doing this summer? Hi, Sam. I'm planning to go abroad with my family. We want to visit France. That sounds amazing. What about you, Sam? I'm staying here this summer. But I'd love to go abroad next year. That was a great example, Eric. Going to France sounds like a dream. It does. Have you ever been abroad, Lisa? Yes, I have. I went to Italy two years ago. It was so beautiful. What did you like most about Italy? I loved the food and the art, and the Pisa Tower was incredible. Did you find it hard to speak Italian, Lisa? A little, but people were very kind when I tried, so it was not very difficult. Would you go abroad again? Definitely. I want to see more of the world. Me too. Going abroad is a great way to learn. Lisa, what should someone consider before going abroad? Good question. It's important to research the country you're visiting. You should learn about the culture, language, and laws. Right. And what about money? Oh yes, make sure you have the right currency and understand the cost of living. I see. Now let's talk about packing. What are your tips? Pack light and only take what you need. Always bring a charger and adapter. Great advice. And how can someone stay safe abroad? Stay aware of your surroundings and keep your belongings secure. Thanks, Lisa. That's all very helpful. You're welcome, Eric. Remember, going abroad is an adventure. Enjoy it, but be prepared. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, let's move on to our next word: to sunbathe. To sunbathe. To sunbathe. Can you explain it, Lisa? Sure. To sunbathe means to sit or lie in the sun, especially to darken your skin. Many people love to sunbathe at the beach or in a park. That's right, Lisa. But remember to wear sunscreen to protect your skin. Now. Let's dive into a sample dialogue to see how this word is used. Imagine two friends, Mia and Tom, at the beach. Hey, Tom, are you ready to sunbathe? Absolutely, Mia. I've been looking forward to this all week. Do you have sunscreen? Yes, I do. It's important to protect our skin. Here you go. Thanks, Mia. It's such a beautiful day to lie in the sun. I agree. After we sunbathe, do you want to go for a swim? That sounds perfect. Let's enjoy the sun. That was a great example, Eric. It shows how to sunbathe is used in a simple and clear way. Yes, it does. Mia and Tom are excited to sunbathe, but they also remember to use sunscreen. That's very important. Eric, do you like to sunbathe? Yes, I do, Lisa. I enjoy being in the sun, especially at the beach. It feels relaxing. How about you? Yes, I love it too. But I always make sure to use sunscreen and drink plenty of water. That's a good point about staying hydrated. Sunbathing is fun, but we should be always careful about our health. Yes, it can cause sunburn or even skin problems. So, it's important to be careful. Definitely. And what should people do to stay safe while sunbathing, Lisa? They should wear sunscreen, drink lots of water. And not stay in the sun for too long. Great advice, Lisa. And what do you like to do at the beach besides sunbathing? 
I love building sandcastles and swimming in the sea. What about you, Eric? I enjoy playing beach volleyball and reading a book under an umbrella. Sounds fun. Remember, listeners, enjoy the sun safely and have a good time. And it's also good to wear a hat and sunglasses to protect your eyes and face. That's a good point, Lisa. Okay, let's move on to the next word. The next word is day trip. Day trip. Day trip. What does it mean, Lisa? A day trip is a journey to a place and back again on the same day, usually for enjoyment. That's right, Lisa. People often take a day trip to visit a city, a beach, or a park nearby. Exactly, Eric. It's when you visit a place for a short time, maybe to see a landmark, enjoy nature, or explore a new city, and you return home the same day. Let's see how this word is used in a sample dialogue. Hey, Jack, do you have any plans for Saturday? I'm thinking of taking a day trip to the mountains. It's only an hour away by train. That sounds like a fun idea. I might go to the seaside for a day trip myself. Nice example, Eric. Day trips are a great way to explore new places. Absolutely. But Lisa, what should people bring on a day trip? Well, it depends on where they're going, but generally they should bring water, snacks, and maybe a camera to take pictures. Good point. And how can people choose where to go for a day trip? They can think about what they enjoy doing. Some might like hiking in nature, while others prefer visiting museums. True. And it's also nice to try something new, right? Absolutely. A day trip is a perfect chance to have a new experience. What's your favorite kind of day trip, Lisa? I love going to historical towns and learning about the past. What about you? I enjoy nature, so a day trip to a national park is ideal for me. That's wonderful. And for our listeners, remember to check the weather before you go. Yes, and also make sure you know the schedule for public transportation if you will use it. Good advice, Eric. And don't forget to wear comfortable shoes. Definitely. Comfort is key on a day trip. Now, Lisa, what's one thing you shouldn't do on a day trip? You shouldn't plan too many activities. It's better to enjoy a few things than to rush. Great tip. It's important to relax and have fun. Exactly. And listeners, don't worry if everything doesn't go as planned. Sometimes the unexpected moments are the best. Okay, now, what is our next word, Lisa? Our next word is bed and breakfast. Bed and breakfast. Bed and breakfast. It's a type of accommodation, smaller than a hotel, usually in someone's home. You get a place to sleep and breakfast in the morning. That's right, Lisa. A bed and breakfast, often called B&B, &B, is a cozy and personal alternative to a hotel. Right, Eric, let's listen to our example dialogue. Mark, I'm visiting the countryside this weekend. Oh, are you staying at a bed and breakfast? Yes, I found a lovely bed and breakfast with a garden view. That sounds delightful, Eric. Staying at a B&B &B can be a unique experience. Indeed. Lisa, what makes a bed and breakfast special? Well, they're often run by families, so you get more personal experience. The owners might share local tips or stories. Great point. And what should guests expect for breakfast? It can change, but usually there's a home-cooked meal with options like eggs, bread, fruit, and coffee. Now, how do people find a good bed and breakfast? They can search online for reviews or ask friends for recommendations. And what's one thing you love about staying at a B&B, &B, Lisa? I enjoy the charming atmosphere. Each one has its own character. What about you, Eric? I like the feeling of community. Sometimes you can meet other travelers at breakfast. That's true. It's a great way to make new friends. Absolutely. And for our listeners, remember to book in advance, especially during the busy season. Yes, and check if they have any special rules like no pets. Good advice, Lisa. And don't forget to ask about the area. There might be hidden gems nearby. Exactly. 
a local festival or a beautiful hiking trail could be just around the corner. Okay, our last word today is foreign. 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 Can you explain it, Eric? Sure, Lisa. Foreign means something from another country. It can be a foreign person, a foreign language, or even foreign food. Exactly, Eric. It's all about things that are not from your own country. Now let's hear a sample dialogue. Imagine two students, Anna and Ben, talking at school. Ben, I heard you're taking a foreign language class. Which language are you learning? Yes, Anna, I'm learning Spanish. It's exciting to learn a foreign language. That sounds fun. I love trying foreign foods. Have you ever eaten Spanish food? I have. Last week, I tried paella. It's a famous Spanish dish. What about you? My family and I went to a Japanese restaurant. Japanese food is my favorite foreign cuisine. That's great. Learning about foreign cultures is really interesting. What a nice exchange between Anna and Ben. They talked about learning a foreign language and trying foreign foods. Yes, it shows how the word foreign can be part of our daily lives. Lisa, have you ever traveled to a foreign country? I have, Eric. I visited Italy last year. Everything was so different and beautiful. How about you? I traveled to Canada once. It was interesting to see the differences and the similarities between my country and Canada. Traveling to foreign countries can be such an increasing experience. You learn so much about other cultures and ways of life. Definitely. And even if we can't travel, we can still experience foreign cultures through food, movies, and language learning. That's right, Eric. It's wonderful how exploring foreign things can expand our understanding of the world. So listeners, have you experienced something foreign recently? Maybe you tried a new food or started learning a new language. We'd love to hear about it. Sharing experiences helps us all learn and grow. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of Simply Explained English and learned something new. Don't forget to practice what you've learned and share it with a friend. Learning English is more fun together. Be sure to tune in next time for easy explanations and helpful tips. Until then, keep it simple and keep learning. Bye for now. Goodbye, everyone.